Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. I honor the Lord for um, Pastor Derek Blue. He's my CFO, and he plays an intricate part in what you see on tonight and what you will continue to see throughout my ministry. So I honor the Lord for him on tonight. Would you bless the Lord for your neighbor on your left and on your right? Were y'all blessed by Pastor Kurt Patrick on tonight? She blessed us on tonight. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord for a few moments. Certainly I want to acknowledge all of these great people of God that are here on tonight uh, that have chosen to be a part of this service. Uh, this is the very first time that we have ever had a night service in my women's retreat out of all of the five years. And so because of this, it is a honor of the guests that we have on tonight uh, that has chosen to be with us, none other than Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. We're gonna hear this legend in a few moments. This Grammy Award winner is going to be with us in a few moments, so I honor her on tonight. But we have some other special guests that are with us on tonight that I definitely don't want to overlook because they've taken the time out of their busy schedule just to support the girl and support what we are doing here on this week. So uh, from the residents of Orlando, Florida, we have Pastor Keith Odom that's with us on tonight and his guests come on y'all bless the Lord for Pastor Odom on tonight he works very hard in the church of God in Christ and we're honored that we, he would have chosen to be with us on this evening uh, not only that but we have the residents of Georgia is with us on tonight and he called and said that I'm in the city and he's here to support would you bless the Lord for Bishop Vincent Drummer and his wife and family come on let's bless the Lord for him There are others that are coming in on tonight, Pastor Cochran and Lady Cochran. Uh, I have Minister Elmore back there. Uh, all of these first ladies that have joined with their first, their ladies to be with us on this weekend. So many um, that we can call on tonight that are just here uh, because they are in support of great vision. I want you to know that you are in the right place at the right time. And because you're here, God's got a miracle with your name on it. Uh, tonight we're getting ready for the word of God. But before we go there, I want as many of you, amen, the, the, the uh, seed time and moment of giving and moment of, 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 of receiving is going to be in the hands of Dr. Cole. Uh, but I want as many of you that will uh, take the time out to just get a love token in your hand. We're going to sow uh, just a little bit on tonight and then we're going to obey what the woman of God has to say. Amen. She will know uh, what the Lord wants us to do and we will follow her instructions. Talk to somebody around you and tell them we're going to follow the woman of God instructions on tonight. So I want as many people tonight that would take uh, a love token of $20, put it in your hand, put it in your hand put it in your hand you're going to sow on tonight you're going to sow on tonight you're going to give on tonight and those that are online right now you can be a part of this giving you can be a part of this giving I want you to make sure that you are a part of this giving on tonight I need you to drop that seed in the ground that $20 seed is a it's a small offering amen for a big harvest it's a small offering for a big harvest. 
Hallelujah. Get that seed and stretch it out real quick. Put that hand up that you know that you need God to work a miracle for and work a miracle through. Put that hand up. Father, we thank you for every giver in this place. Thank you for every sower in this house. We bless you, Father, for testimonies, rebates, and refunds that are getting ready to hit our hand. We give you glory for great vision, great testimonies, and great outcomes. We bless you for all things and know that you shall do a great thing in Jesus name amen why don't you just begin to give that seed if you have uh, the information is being shared there Lat Ministries 22 amen Lat Ministries 22 you can give right there amen and those that have cash if you have it in your hand and you want to bring it right now you are welcome to bring it right now you can put it right here and those that need credit card uh, help you can go in the back our administrator is waiting for you to swipe your card and she's going to take care of you glory to God come on the people are giving the people are giving the people are giving I see you online I see you online the people are giving the people are giving how many know the great blessings are getting ready to come to your house great miracles are getting ready to come to your house. God bless all of you. God bless all of you. Well, it's time to get ready for the word of God. Anybody been ready for the word of God? I said, are you ready for the word of God? We're getting ready to give in the house of the Lord. I tell you, it was 2015 uh, that my life changed because God allowed me uh, to be in uh, the presence of this great woman of God and her team. My life changed. And it's something about when the Lord ordains a moment for you. You have to maximize that moment, seize that moment, and realize that the opportunity can only come by somebody that can make that moment happen. And the Lord allowed my ministry uh, to be exposed in 2015 in Tampa, Florida at the AIM Convention. I shared it with the people of God on today. I had seven minutes and I preached in five minutes, but my life changed because a Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole found favor in a little girl from Sylvania, Georgia. From that time and up until this present time, she has appointed me as her assistant elect lady in the evangelism department of the Churches of God in Christ. I'm honored. I'm honored to stand behind her. I'm honored to see vision come to pass. But I am also honored to see a legend, a legend that I saw when I was a little girl that was on a wide uh, picture where we used to take the record and put it on the record machine and it would turn. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So to watch her face go around that and now I'm able to put my hands on her. It is absolutely mind blowing. She is an award winner. Her. She is a uh, woman of God that has been anointed to preach the word of God all over the world. I'm excited to bring her to this retreat on this year. And I'm telling you, you are in for a treat. She is the international uh, elect lady of the Department of Evangelism in the Church of God in Christ. She works very closely with her pastor, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop uh, Sheard. And I know that the Lord has put her here in this earth for such a time as this. So women of God, we are not going to delay any moment. Uh, we're going to bring the woman of 
God up. She can come as however she want to come. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't miss what God got in her mouth. Put your hands together and receive none other than Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. the Lord a hand clap on this afternoon, this evening. Hallelujah. Is that all you got for him? I said, is that all? Some of y'all got your, you got your phones in your hand. I said, is that all you got for Jesus? He deserves for you to put your phone down and give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise because he's so worthy. He's so worthy. He woke you up this morning. Clothed you in your right mind. You got eyes to see, legs to walk, a mouth to talk. Come on, that's a good place to give him praise. It's imperative that we touch and agree and believe God for the miracles that are coming to our house. It's imperative that we touch and agree. We're believing the miracles that is coming to our house. I need you to get your neighbor by the hand. I want you to squeeze your neighbor's hand and tell him, say, neighbor, everything that God did for you, and you're grateful about it, you haven't seen nothing yet. Hold the hand, hold the hand, hold the hand. Tell them there's a miracle that's coming to you that you have been waiting for for the last two years. Tell them the pandemic held it up. But tell them, say, God got you right here, right now, for the miracle that's been coming to you. Come on, if you believe it, clap them hands and give God the best. Oh, you're not excited about it. It just may come tomorrow. It just may come on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It just might come. I don't know about you, but you got to start speaking it out of your mouth. When you speak out of your mouth, the Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. And if you believe everything you speak it out, you better shout on it. Get loud about it so God can hear you. Come on, that's a good place to praise it. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, your outstretched hands. You've been so good to us. You've stayed the hand of death, gave us another opportunity come through these doors of worship and to worship your name because your name is a strong tower the righteous that's us we run therein and we are safe and so God because we're safe we came here tonight to give you glory praise and honor father we're thinking about all the things that you have done for us in the last couple of weeks father we knew you had your hand on it we knew that you had us in mind and so God, because you had us in mind, we came to give you glory. We came to give you praise. Father, I don't know what it is that these women have come in here to get from you. Father, you know what they need. And Father, I pray that you'll drop a spirit. I pray that you'll drop your spirit down on these women. And let them know that there are so many things that they're getting ready to do. Father, I pray that you would usher them into a place of safety. Usher them into a place of, 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 of more, of more, of more, of more. Usher them into a place where they already see themselves being blessed. God, I thank you for what you're about to do. Now, God, speak me tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be the mouthpiece. And thank you, God, that as we speak tonight, let your word come in a mighty hammer. Let it break up the fallow ground. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the hand of the devil and we cast him out of our minds. Father, we came to get something from you tonight. So preach me like a mad woman. Put the devil on the run and make him drop everything that belongs to the saints. 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing tonight. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, God, that the ways are already being made. We thank you, God, that the doors are already being opened. We thank you, God, that favor is already before us. And we thank you for what you're going to give us tonight. And we'll praise you. We'll magnify you. We'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Just before you take your seat, I want to honor um, this great uh, woman of God. Um, if we can get some gentlemen to come and move this back just a little bit. Just move this back, uh, the monitor back just a little bit. And that way we won't get so much feedback. That's it. Thank you so much. Amen. We honor God for his presence on tonight. I don't know about you, but I really sense that God's going to give us an overflow blessing. Hallelujah. I sense tonight that God's going to give us an overflow blessing. Now, let me just, let me just certify the house. And every time you raise your hand in his house, he goes to your house. So now you got your hands up. Said one more time, every time you raise your hand in his house, he goes to your house. That means if I tell you that God is going to save your children, if you've got unsaved children, you need to get your hands up. Tell you that God is on the move of even stretching your business and getting ready to make sure that all the bills are paid. You need to have your hands up. You just came from the doctor. The doctor have given you a diagnosis, and you don't even know how in the world this has happened to you. And you believe in God for miracles. I think you need to have your hand up. Some of y'all left home and you didn't even know how God was going to do it. But God said the remedy is here tonight. Uh, so pass it down your row and tell your neighbor, say, what you put in is what you're going to get out. If you don't put nothing in, you're certainly not going to get nothing out. Come on, open up your mouth and let's praise God for what God is getting ready to do. I want to honor tonight these great people of God. I'm so thankful. I want to... Um, say that these are two of the most wonderful people that I've met um, in a long time and um, our friendship goes far beyond what we ever could imagine and I'm so thankful that God has done what he did and allowed us to finally get to this this conference and um, so I want to thank God let's thank God for pastor First of all, Pastor Tillman, Superintendent Tillman, come on, we love him so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Appreciate you. And um, certainly, um, I was really surprised. I thought I was just going to get a car service. <laughs> and lo and behold, bam, Pastor was out there picking me up. Amen. And so that was just such a treat to see him come. And certainly to our host on tonight come on y'all give it up my dear sister my friend i am so glad she's a part of me the one and only dr prophetess the tyra tillman love you love you so much love you so much and certainly to bishop drummer tonight we thank god for him the presence is always a blessing and uh, see another friend of Kojic, and that's Pastor Odom. I've been to their church. Come on, let's thank God for Pastor. Good to see you, Pastor. And uh, just so glad to see the people of God that came to embrace. Good to see my girl. Amen. She did that praise and worship, didn't she, y'all? Amen. Come on, give it up. Give it up. We bless God for her. And certainly to all of you that have come to um, be a part of this uh, service of the night, I'm a witness and I'm, thank God, I'm making history that this is the first time that you all have had a night service. And um, so I think you need to clap for that. Thank God for the vision there. Amen. 
back. So I'm thanking God for this time. You can take your seat on your way down, look at your neighbor and say, so much is getting ready to come to you. If you could only see what you got coming. I dare you to put your hands over your eyes and say, I see so much that God's about to give to me. Say it again. I see so much that God is about to give to me. If I could just make it through the next couple of days, I'll be happy to see what God has for me. We always expect the best. And God always gives us the best. I'm so glad I love the Lord. And ladies, I found out he could be your man and my man at the same time. And I don't have to worry about him going to your house. And you ain't got to worry about him coming to mine. Because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. And that's what I love about him. And then I love it because he always looks out for each one of us. He has no respect to person. He blesses all of us at the same time. And that is such a blessing. So glad to see a very, very uh, close friend of ours all the way from New Jersey. She happened to be at this conference. And that's Evangelist Corey is here. Stand up, Evangelist Corey, so they can see. Is that, uh, is that Latar too? Latar, these are my rosebuds. Come on, stand up. Stand, both of y'all stand up. Stand up, stand up. Girl, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But they always support me, and I appreciate that. My little rosebuds. Beyonce got her beehive, and I got my rosebuds. <laughs> Amen. I just appreciate that. And it's so important that we as leading women, uh, myself and Dr. Tillman, and those of you that are leading women in front of the forefront of ministry you do understand that when you've got people following you that is to be commended because i think um uh, pastor pastor is that pastor yeah okay pastor he just said that um that she's an influencer and amen leading ladies are influencers Amen. And it's so important that you are uh, living a life of example so that you can influence others uh, to know about Jesus. I think Tierra's here. I don't know what evangelist. Oh, girl, I didn't know. <laughs> Amen. Evangelist Tierra Walton. And now stand up, sweetie pie. Amen. Sister Tierra. I mean, God is really using this young woman and I'm so so glad to see she has a wonderful book out that um, I was the forward of and um, she you she got it right there and it's uh, kind of talking about what I'm gonna talk about tonight and that's about um, ex intensifying your prayer life and your prayer life has to be intensified in order for God to use you today today and we're going to be talking about that. But I'm so glad to see you, Sister Evangelist Walton. Amen. Powerful woman of God. And I tell you, God uses her. There's a little song that, um, you know, I was just telling the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm getting sick and tired of these songs I'm singing. <laughs> and um, I don't know, but sometimes uh, songwriters do get tired of singing the same old songs because that's be one. That's what you be wanting to hear. But we would be wanting to have new inspiration. <laughs> and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm really so tired of singing the same song. And I said, these people are going to get tired of me singing the same song. I got some new ones coming. Look at your neighbor and say, she got some new ones coming. And um, I, I uh, was saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, just please work out some things for me. And I had some situations going on. But uh, lift your hand and say, I know God is able. I know he's able to do anything. Amen. You may have a situation and it looks like it's so hard to get done. But you know God can work it out, don't you? I said, you know God can work it out. You got something going on right now and you need God to work it out. That's what I was just saying. You, you got to raise your hand if you need God. It's too late now. You just missed that one. Just missed that one. 
But if you need God to work it out, you got to make sure he responds. But there's a song, when I look back over my life and I see all the things God's done for me, mm, been through danger, heartache, and trouble, I thank the Lord, he's rescued me. got some women in here that do understand. Now I can say, look at me y'all, I'm still here. And it's by the grace, anybody know it's by the grace of God. How many of y'all riding on grace right now? Oh, when I look back over my life and I see all the things the Lord has brought me through. Anybody ever been through sickness, trials, and suffering? I thank the Lord. He's blessed me still in spite of all the things I had to go through. I could have lost the faith. Every now and then I could have slapped somebody Slapped somebody in their face Thank God for the Holy Ghost Now I can say That I'm still here And it's by the grace It's by the grace of God I'm going to fast forward it a little bit Well I am still here and it's by the grace. Everybody knows that God's been so good to you, yeah. I'm still here, y'all. It's by the grace. It's a limited favor that gave me another chance. I'm still here. It's by the grace of God that I am what I am. I am still here It's by the grace of God Oh, Thank you Lord I am what he said I would be I'm still here It's by the grace Nobody knows the story behind your glory That's why you got to say I'm still here It's by the grace of God some of y'all had heart attacks. Some of y'all had strokes, but I'm still here, yeah. It's by the grace. Nobody knows what you had to go through to get to where you are right now. I'm still here. It's by the grace of God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, I'm, I'm still. I'm not doing that balloon thing. I can do it now. I did it 38 seconds now. Oh, ooh, ooh, yeah. I'm still here. Anybody in here got a testimony that God kept you through it all? You gotta say, I'm still here. Oh. Some folk have died with the same sickness you got right now, but I'm, I'm still here. I am. It's by the grace, the grace of God. I gotta say it oh, I'm still here, y'all. It's by the grace of God. While you're standing, get your, get your Bibles. I'm still here. It's by the grace. I am 
chapter 1 verse 5 it reads like this but unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut up her womb the Lord had shut up her womb and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, everybody say, you just got to go up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why, said to her, why weepeth thou? And why eateth thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Ninth verse, so Hannah rose up. Then sometimes you get tired. I said, sometimes you get tired. Ran, uh, Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was bitterness of soul and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Open your mouth and say, and prayed. Until the Lord and wept sore. The 12th verse says, And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Sometimes you can't let the devil know what you're talking about. She was praying, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought that she had been drunken. But the thought for tonight, for this conference, I want you to grab a neighbor by the hand and look him right dead in the eye. They may owe you some money, this is a good time to get him. Look at me and tell them, say, neighbor, when you gonna pay me my money back? No, I'm trying to help some of y'all. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, they say, you got to know how to pray through the pressure. Tell them again, say, tell them again on the other side, say, you got to know how to pray under pressure. Now look at somebody else and tell them, say, you got to get to Shiloh if you really want to get a prayer through. That's what I want to talk about. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord on your way down. Tell your neighbor, say, you really got to know how to pray under pressure. That's what I want to talk about for the next few moments because sisters and brothers, it's important that we understand that this place that we're in right now, I'm not talking about literally this place, but I'm talking about in your life, the season that you're in right now, it is going to be important to you that prayer becomes a priority. You cannot afford to say you know God and don't pray. It's impossible for you to say you save and you don't pray. Praying is the only thing that gets us out of most of the difficult times that we have to deal with. 
We're going to have to learn how to pray through the pressure. And the, that's what's so important to me tonight is because um, some things are not going to really break until you pray. You can't just get up and go on your daily tasks and, without mentioning about God, especially if you know him. If you know him, you ought to talk about him. Yeah, yeah he said, in all thy ways, talk about me, <laughs> and I will direct your path. That's what's so important to us to understand, that praying through the most difficult times in our life, it's amazing how God brought us through every one. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said he brought us through every one of those difficult moments that we've experienced. Death and grief and all of these things that we had to deal with. God brought us through it. He's the only one that can keep our minds sane. We feel like we're about to lose it. That's why he said he keep you in perfect peace. But you got to do something. You got to keep your mind stayed on him. That means the minute you get up in the morning, you got to make sure you acknowledge him. Uh, because he is, after all, the author, the finisher of your faith. You can't go anywhere without God being in the forefront of your life. That, that, that's so important for us to understand that while we're praying through situations and you seem like they're out of control, God is the only one that can help us get over it. Praying through circumstances that seem to have almost taken the very breath out of your body. Uh, it takes God to get us through some of the pressure that we have to deal with. Can I be honest with you tonight? It, it, it does. It, it gets a little hard sometimes trying to pray through. Yeah. Testing. Can y'all hear me? Sometimes it gets a little hard trying to pray through when you're going through. Uh huh. When you're experiencing some of the worst things you could ever experience in your life. If you really take a moment and think of the worst situation that you had to overcome and trying to get through it. One thing that I can say is that God gave us a 101 chorus in the pandemic. Y'all look slow up in here. He gave us a 101 chorus of praying because all we were doing in the pandemic was pray. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we learned how to get on Zoom. That was the only way that we could connect with each other in praying because we had more Zoom calls than we had church. Yeah. Zoom prayer calls is what kept your mind. The Zoom prayer calls is what kept you diligent before God. The Zoom prayer calls is what kept you on, on the road of, of saying, Lord, I need you. If I don't get you, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Yeah, it was the prayer calls of, that kept your mind uh, on the right path because the Bible was telling us so many things that we needed to do. And, and, and because we were going through so much in the pandemic, we couldn't understand why and how long. But even in the course of all of that, God kept us. The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man now, if I start a scripture, those of y'all that are preachers and reachers and teachers, you ought to be able to finish it. Mm -hmm. The prayers of a righteous man. Uh, well, I thought I had a church in here. Mm -hmm. There are saints that, 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 that know how to cry until God hears you. Praying through the pressure or the pain. You've experienced in the last three years, God delivered us. And we ought to be a testament that God did it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth us out of all of our troubles. 
when the righteous cry uh, up under a great intense pressure, that's when God delivers. I could just say that, Sister Dorinda, that, that, that's when God want to find out if you're really serious. Mm-hmm. So he has to bring some things your way to find up or even to wake you up to make sure that you're on the right path. Or are you still in tune? Some of y'all tuning me out right now, I can tell. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy does. The enemy will bring distractions and attractions to keep you from looking to the hills from which cometh your help. He'll bring anything and dangle it in front of your face. Keep you off course. But tonight, I stop by to tell you, don't stop praying. Mm -hmm. You can't stop praying because prayer is your secret weapon. Prayer fights off the pressure. Prayer fights off the adversary. Prayer fights off your haters. Prayer fights off antagonizing forces. Prayer fights off depression and worry and fear and anxiety. We got to understand that prayer, it still works. But it's up to the one that's praying and how fervent your prayer is that gets God's attention. We see prayer now has become accentual to a believer. We have to pray prayer. Uh, don't, we, we can't stop praying. We, got, we can't let up. We can't panic. But we just got to keep and stay in the path that God has given us. Amen. When you really think about it for a moment, the pandemic has caused many of us to lose our joy. Amen. I said the pandemic has caused many of us to lose your joy. Think about it. You're not as happy as you used to be. Think about it. You, you, you don't get happy like you used to get happy. Y'all, y'all, y'all not getting my, my... I got two happies there. You're not as happy as you used to be. He said, and then you don't get happy. You know, when I say get happy, that means, hey, glory to God. Y'all a little slow up in here, praise God. <laughs> yeah. We don't get happy. Like we used to get happy because we've lost something in the pandemic. The pandemic has caused us to lose our study habits. The pandemic, the pandemic, it, it has come to ravish you away until you've had so much grief until you can't even pay yourself any attention. Pandemic, the pandemic. Think about it. We were away from everybody for almost a whole year. Couldn't come out, couldn't talk, we couldn't sit like this. Look at look at look look at what happened. The pandemic kept us six feet away. Couldn't touch your neighbor. I said you couldn't. You say, hey, hey, that's it. We couldn't even do no high fives. Yeah, the pandemic has done something to us until we have lost our prayer and our praise to God. The pressure, the pressure of the pandemic was causing, the the, the, the pandemic was causing death and disparities and and discomfort. And because because we couldn't understand what was going on, this has never happened to us in life. Somebody asked me, when was the last pandemic? I don't even know. I must, uh, I must have been a baby. Or I don't know when a last pandemic was, but I'm here to tell you, we've never seen what we see. And, and th- that should be a wake-up call for all of us. We've got to get and be about our father's business. It's no time to come to church and try to figure out who's who and what, what and what's going to happen next. You better get God for yourself. You don't know where the next death is. You don't know what the next accident is. You don't know what's going to happen. That's why the, 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 the songwriter said, I don't know. It may be my last time. I don't know. But I'm going to keep on praising God in spite of what I'm dealing with. We didn't know what was going to happen next. 
We didn't know who was going to fall to death. We didn't know what was going to happen. And pressure, pressure set up in us so bad until it made us a nervous wreck. Pressure brings out anxiety. Puts you in a place of perplexity. Difficulty. Pressure will have you in a confused state if you let it. It will will cause you to become to a place where I don't know whether I'm coming or going. And you find out you you think you're bipolar. Uh, I've never seen so many bipolar saints now. Yeah, you got the bipolar saints. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about the ones in Detroit. I've seen so many bipolar saints. One one minute you're speaking to me, the next minute you don't know who I am. Bipolar, bipolar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, one minute you want to go out to eat, and the next minute I don't know. I don't want to go with them. What did I do? Yeah. Bipolar. Look at your neighbor. Say, I hope you're not bipolar. Yeah, yeah, you got to make sure. Yeah, 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 that's why God's not blessing us because, not y'all, I'm talking about some people up in, in North Carolina. That, that, that's why God's not blessing us it's because we are sometime. Sometimes you want to come to church, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut. And sometimes you don't. I don't know what to say. All I know is that I don't want God to catch me being sometimey. Because it's too much going on in the world now. It's too many things that we got to deal with now. And, and if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves in a depressed mode. Well, the enemy is going to try to drive you there. That's why it's so important to make sure that your prayer life is intact. What's keeping us holding on, ladies and gentlemen, is the prayer life that has sustained you through your crisis. It's the prayer life that is giving you hope that God's hand is on your life. The scripture says to us about trouble. You can't never see it coming. Mm -hmm. I said, the the scripture says that, it says it, I'm just paraphrasing it, but you can never see trouble coming. Trust me, it shows up in very inopportune times. Psalms 138 and 7, it says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath. Of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. I love the eighth verse. It says the Lord will perfect. That which concerns. Any of y'all in here got some concerns. Well God said. He's going to perfect. Those things. In other words. He's going to straighten it out. In other words. He's going to make it up to you. In other words, he's going to grant you favor. He's getting ready to perfect that which he has given you. And that that is concerning you, that that concerns you, concerns you. Woo! Lord, I had to get happy. I'm sorry, I had a moment. I said that that concerns you, concerns you. Y'all still ain't got it. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to a really kind of kind of tough crowd in here. I said, that, that concerns you, concerns you. Let me say it to myself. That, that concerns me, concerns me. And how in the world am I going to get through all of this trouble that I'm dealing with? I've got to make sure I stay in shallow. Shallow. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to stay in shallow. What is shallow? That was the place of worship. You got to make sure you come to church. You can't let what happened in the pandemic affect your life and your lifestyle. You, you've got to make sure you come to church. Healing is in the church. Deliverance is in the church. The unity that we have together, it only happens in the church. 
Y'all not saying nothing to me. That's why it's so important that David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when I get to the house of the Lord, I won't have to worry about what concerned me throughout the day. I can praise God knowing that by the time I get back home, everything is going to work together for my good. Is it anybody in here know that God is getting ready to make up the things that you didn't get in the pandemic? He's getting ready to turn some things around. He's getting ready to put your name on the billboard to let everybody know that what you meant for evil. God's about to turn it around. Matter of fact, I dare you to turn around right where you are and see it turned around already. God's going to turn that situation around. God's going to turn your crazy children around. God's going to turn your family around. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Open your mouth and say, I'm going to serve him. Spite of all the trouble that I have to experience, I'm going to serve the Lord. I made up in my mind that I wouldn't let nothing separate me from the love of God. Uh, That's why it's important to understand that God recognizes that he want to see if you recognize that he's in control. Today I just want to communicate to use some principles on prayer that women when you leave this service on tonight you're not here by happenstance you're not here because you got your ticket you're not here just because you're sitting in this room and just need to get away no God got you away for a reason He had to get you away because the situation had turned out so bad until you needed to get some rest and relaxation. God will do that to you. Am I talking to anybody in here? The trouble that you've been experiencing. God told me to tell you it's just about over. Ah, if you can't see it before you see it, you never will see it. I need you to tell somebody the trouble that you're experiencing right now is just about over. Matter of fact, give somebody a high five and say, let's talk prophetic and say it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I see it in my sanctified imagination that everything that I had to go through, God is working it out. I said he's working it out. Can you tell somebody he's working it out right now? That by this time tomorrow, you're going to get a text on your phone and say, I'm sorry. You're going to get a text on your phone say, I didn't mean to say it that way. You're going to get a text on your phone that I've already stamped to prove. You're going to get a text on your phone that I'm working it out. That by the time you get back on your knees, The time you get back on your knees, God said, I've already answered the prayer you talked to me about before. Am I talking to anybody in here? Open up your mouth and say, God, you can trust me. But just help me get through the trouble. Come on and clap your hands and give God the praise. Take your seat for just a moment. The scripture. In the scripture text, it really gives us a backdrop of women going through. Hannah was the woman that was going through. A woman being frustrated and made fun of. We've all been there. They talked about us and said that you'd never mount up to anything said that you'll never get that job you'll never have that business you'll never do and, and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor quit listening to the devil 
The only time you have time to listen to the devil is when you are just sitting alone and you're not saying anything to God. Y'all didn't catch what I just said. I said the only time that you're going to hear the devil is when you're sitting alone and you're allowing him to dump everything on you like you a trash can. The devil is a liar. You better get up and start moving and say I can't do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Who am I talking to up in here? Look at your neighbor and say the devil is trying his best to kill your spiritual intentions. He's trying his best to steal your joy. He's trying his best to get the best of you. But you've got to have enough God in you to shake the dust off your feet and say, for God I'll live. For God I'll die. And sometimes you got to talk to God like, God, you got me in this trouble. How in the world am I going to get out? How am I going to get out of all of this hell that I'm going through? And God God said, I need you to stay in it a little longer. Well, what you gonna do while you're staying in it? I will bless the Lord and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What's going on, God? When am I coming out? He said, you're not coming out yet because you've got to learn how to wait. i got to learn, show you patience. He said, they that wait upon he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up wings like an eagle. You shall run, not get weary. You shall walk and not the only reason why you can memorize that scripture is because your head was in the Bible. If you don't know it, by now. I said, if you don't know it, by now. That means the devil is going to try his best to make you miss out on what God has for you. Well, let me just tell you as I move on really quick. That's why I want to just chat with you ladies tonight. About walking into your divine destiny. It's your season. I know you've been hearing that every year. Yeah, because every, every year brings a new season. And you got to understand that every time you hear it, that means that something good is getting ready to happen. Yeah, this is your season that God is allowing you to walk in the spirit of prayer. Prayer has to be a major priority in our lifestyle. And when the pressure comes, you got to know that God is going to give you the strength to mount up. If you really want to meet a woman under pressure, look at Hannah. Hannah had two things going against her. Uh-huh. It was called pressure. She was barren. Number one, couldn't have children. Number two, she was living in a house with somebody that had children and they kept poking and flashing their children before her. Y'all ain't been there. You don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, she was barren. Here you got a lady that's got 20 kids. Then you got a lady that want to have kids and can't have. I don't hear nobody in here. Yeah, yeah. So that, that she was barren and couldn't have children. But then living in a house with your relatives. Y'all ain't hearing me. And they're constantly talking against you. You can't have no kids. Can you just imagine what God is doing right now? Here it is, Penina had children and Hannah couldn't have none. With my spiritual imagination, I can just see Penina saying, I'm going out. Can you watch my kids? <laughs> really? Are you serious? Now see, that's, that's a good place to really cut somebody up. <laughs> we don't do that, so we just talk back. We just talk back. I, 
Are you really crazy? Have you lost your mind? Making Hannah feel some kind of way. Sometimes the enemy, sisters and brothers, will flaunt things in your face and make you mad and upset. But that doesn't mean that that's all life has to offer. Ah, that, that's what you call pressure. Some of y'all sitting in here right now is under pressure. If it's not the person in your house, then it's the person on your job. If it's not the person on your job, then it's the person in the street that's trying to, you, you, you're trying to get somewhere and you're trying to get your business straightened out and they won't try to help you. Am I talking to anybody in here? The enemy will try his best to make you want to give up. It's because it's pressure. But look at Hannah. Hannah was under pressure emotionally. She was under pressure physically. She was even probably under pressure financially. And then having all of those family issues in the household, that is pure pressure. But sisters, you know, dealing with things in life, God usually has the final say. Woo, I love that about him. That it does not matter what is going on. Guess what? He's sitting there looking at seeing how you're going to act. You can mess it up or he can dress it up. Yeah. I said you can mess it up or he can dress it up. That's what I love about God. It, it, when you, when year after year, you're saying, Lord, I, how long have I got to deal with this? How, how long have I got to struggle with it? How long have I got to keep going back and forth? And God said that today is your day of deliverance. Ah, I don't hear nobody in here. I said, God told me today that the day is your day of deliverance. This is, this is the last time that the enemy going to flaunt stuff in your face. This is the last time that you're going to get frustrated over family members. This is the last time that you're going to get mad because the money ain't coming in. Like I just know the scripture said that my God shall supply. All of my needs according to his riches and glory. I, I know he said he will take care of me. He, he said that he will supply my needs. But not only will he supply my needs, but he'll give me what I want. Tell your neighbor, say, God will give you what you want. You can imagine what happened here. Mm, Brother John, I think I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh, I went on. Year after year, Peninnas kept on flashing things before Hannah. And Hannah remembered that if I can just get to shallow, and I, I know that when I get there, I talk to Jesus and he'll make everything all right. I'm trying to bring it. Uh, how did I get up there so fast? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a key you can't play in. No. I'm just playing with you. Oh, Lord, I, I want to know when I get to shallow, I know that I'll see what God is about to give to me. And uh, when, when uh, they were about to take a trip, good God Almighty, Elkanah, y'all know him, Elkanah, said we get ready to go up and have a feast, and we got to get ready for convocation, thank you Jesus, and when I get there, I won't have to worry about what folks say. Because if I have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about my troubles, he'll hear my faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. I feel the little prayer will turn it. Because I know the little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. It's 
going to make it all right. Anybody ever had a talk with the Lord lately? Let me ask you one more time. I said, anybody ever had a talk with the Lord lately? He didn't leave you by yourself. But guess what he did? He took your care. And guess what he did? He took it and threw it and said, I got it. Now go on and praise me. Give me the glory. And I'll make sure that you won't have to suffer no more. Look at what happened to Hannah. Hannah was in tears. She lost her appetite. But in the midst of that, she still had a prayer life. Tell your neighbor, whatever you do, don't lose your prayer life. That's all you got when the odds are against you. That's all you got when mother and father forsake you. That's all you got when all your money is gone. That's all you got when you got a whole lot of bills and you don't know how they're going to get paid. That's all you got when somebody dies in your family. Whatever you do when you pray, look to the Lord. He'll have his way. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Lord. I want to submit to you that you're going through some pressure. And don't lose your mind while you're going through. Because those are the times that God solely answers. He'll answer your prayer and give you direct attention. Don't let what the enemy say throw you off. Because God, he knows where you are. He knows the way that you take. That when you are tried, anybody ever been tried? When you try, you shall come forth as pure gold. What I love about Hannah, Hannah gave enough strength to say enough is enough. I said she gained enough strength to say enough is enough. Have I got any women in the house? When you get sad, tired of being sick and tired, and then you say enough is enough. Give me a woman, a praying woman that knows God. She knows how to get a prayer through. Children going wild. She know how to get on her knees. And if she can't get on her knees, she'll start moving her body. Say, oh Lord, I know you can. And I know you will. But look at Hannah. Hannah said, I'm going to pray to God that he give me peace in this situation. Peace under the pressure. Peace in the pain. And see if you want anything from God, you got to know and do what it takes to get to God without your family, without friends, without co-workers. Just need to get in the sanctuary. Hannah prayed, said, Lord, I'm sick and tired of Penina poking fun at me, telling me you barren and you can't have children. What you say, I can't. God said, I can. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, what folks say, you can't. God said you can, that when it looks like things are going the opposite direction, God knows how to turn it around. Can I get a witness? Fasting is going without food. Hannah knew how to fast. And sometimes prayer, it's okay. But fasting, it move mountains. Fasting, it breaks up the fellow ground. Fasting will make people speak to you. Fasting, change their whole demeanor. Fasting.
spin It gets rid of anything that would be a hindrance You must have purpose Hannah wanted a son given to thine handmaid A man child You got to intercede Hannah prayed unto the Lord She cried You can't pray until you cry when you're crying that's simply showing God that I mean it I need you to do it and God said to Hannah all I need is you to show me that you want a child Hannah went into the tabernacle got on her knees and said Lord you promised it you said that if I ask anything in your name that you would give it you told me to give and you would give back to me Lord I gave my prayer Lord I gave my fashion and so tonight God here I am in the tabernacle what man said would not happen I can't go back home until I get an answer I can't receive my people until I get an answer I can't see Penina until I get an answer Her answer was in the tabernacle Her answer was on her knees God told her, said if you call on me I'll give you just what you need I won't forget the times that we had around the piano talking about me and my sisters see God honors the time you spend with him God honors the time that you seek him God honors the time of even rehearsing God honors the time you read your Bible God honors the time you win a soul God honors the time you spend with him and that's what he was looking at on the course of her going to the tabernacle getting on her knees and when she got on her knees everybody started looking saying what's wrong with her she must be drunk good God almighty but Hannah kept on praying to God the Bible says why she was down there good God almighty her lips move I said her lips move and I want to tell you you can't get on your knees without your lips moving you can't get it in your heart you gotta say it with your mouth you don't want the enemy knowing everything you said so what you gotta do get it on your lips get it in your mind and guess what God hears the righteous cry and before you know it God watched Hannah's posture God seen how diligent she was and that's what we gotta be more diligent in coming to church more diligent in serving God's people more diligent in coming to prayer service more diligent in prayer and fasting so God he honors it in secret he rewards it openly and that's what happened when Hannah by the time she got back home God gave her a promise gave her Samuel and I'm here to tell you whatever you desire when you pray all you gotta do is ask and it shall be given seek and you will find knock and the door shall be open who told you to do it he told me that he'd make my feet like hinds feet I'm getting ready to jump over everything that the enemy has put in my path because guess what he said good God Almighty he said the word of God is the only thing that kept me coming to the house the word of God we kindled my fire the word of God it's quick 
It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God. It's a lamp. It's like a navigation system. It's a lamp unto my path. It gets me going when I need to go. It takes me where I shouldn't be and put me where I ought to be. Who in here is like Hannah saying, Lord, please give me what I ask for. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, get your hands up and say, Lord, Lord, give me what I ask for. I need your power. I need more grace. I need more faith. I need more joy. I need more stamina. I need more power. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, give me power. Woo, Lord, give me power. In my talk, open up your mouth and say, Lord, I need it. I need it. I've been praying for three years. And tonight, I feel a shaking. I feel a breaking. Getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to give me release. Who am I talking to? I said he's getting ready to release you from your haters. Release you from the wolves. Release you from the folk that's trying their best to set you up. He's getting ready to release you from sickness. Release you from pain. Release you from the pressure. Because I found out pressure was good for me. Yes, it was. It got me down on my knees. It got Hannah to swallow pressure. It makes you understand that you're not in this by yourself. I've seen the lightning passion. I heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing. Trying. I feel my help here to conquer my soul. Then I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, still fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never, 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 never to leave me alone. Anybody here knows he walks with you. He talks to you. He tells you that you're his own. The joy we share as we tear it there. None other has never known. That's why I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Give a high is on the sparrow. I know he watches me. I can't worry. My haters don't know where they get ready to see me. I'm getting ready to shoot over their head. They don't even know where I'm going. But the Bible says, good God Almighty, when the man's ways please the Lord, he make it. His player haters, shut up and be at peace. He said, God will rise and he'll make their enemies scatter away. How many of y'all need some enemies to leave you alone, to get away from you? I need you to loosen up yourself. Get out of your seat and say, Lord, I feel that you're scattering all my haters. Lord, I feel like you're getting rid of them. All of the folk that tried to do me in, Lord, I got a feeling 
that every time I praise you, you get ready to make my enemies my footstool. Open up your mouth and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, ooh, neighbor. Y'all ain't sinning like I need you to say, I said, neighbor, hey, neighbor, you got to know that God's getting ready to lift the pressure. God's getting ready to give you stamina. God's getting ready to show you where you're going. If you got a sneak peek of where you're going to end up, you'll be shouting and giving God praise. But touch three people and tell them, get ready. You're going somewhere. Get ready. He's getting ready to show everything you've been praying about. Get ready. Eyes have not seen. Yes. Having heard all of the good things that the Lord has in store for you. If you believe it, open up your mouth and say, Lord, you can count on me. Just lift the pressure. Say it again, Lord. You can count on me. Just lift the pressure. I need y'all to do it like I'm saying it. Say, Lord. You can count on me I just need you To lift the pressure Lift the pressure Pressure of discouragement Pressure of healing Pressure of sight Pressure of pain Lift the pressure Come on, I need you To keep saying it Lift the pressure From your kids Lift the pressure From family members Lift the pressure on your job. Lift the pressure. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. I need you to get out of your seat. Go to walking. Get out your seat. Don't look at me. Get out of your seat. Get out of your seat. Don't stand there. Get out of your seat. Go to walking and say, Lord. Lift the pressure. You know what pressure you under. Lord, lift the pressure. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Lift the pressure. Keep it moving. Lift the pressure of discouragement. Lift the pressure of all this pain. Lift the pressure. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Y'all come this way, keep it moving, come this way, keep it moving, come this way, keep it moving, you got a lot of people behind you, keep it moving, keep it moving, don't stand still, keep it moving, keep it moving, God's getting ready to lift the pressure, yes he is, I feel it, in my hands I don't go back to your seat keep it moving God's getting ready to give you great investment keep it moving keep it moving lift the pressure lift the weight the weight that is weighing me down lift the pressure lift the weight Lord I need you it's too painful I need you to lift it. It's too hard. I need you to lift it. I'm getting weary. I need you to lift it. I'm getting hard. I need you to lift it. Who needs the lift? Open your mouth and say, I need it. I need you to lift it. I need you to lift it. Lift the pressure. The pressure of sickness. Lift it now. This cancer has got to go. This cancer has got to go. Why do we praise him so cancer won't stay? Why do we praise him so
so they won't find nothing. Why do we praise him so he can stamp a proof? Why do we praise him so God can make everything in my favor? Come on, open your mouth and say, I feel a lifting. I feel a lifting.
in this room is unexpected blessings that are coming to those that will receive. Now, if I told you that in 24 hours that God was coming to your house, that that is undone, God's getting ready to make it done. If I told you that God's getting ready to give you some good news, when you get back to the doctor, I just need to know how you gonna act. But when you got good news, you get excited.
Everybody standing on your feet. Been that good, been that good. Been that good to me. Kept me from all the pressure and the pain that I had to go through. So good, so good. Some of y'all were on the respirator during COVID-19. God got you off while everybody passed on. You don't know how to give God praise. Shame on you. If you don't know how to give God, make some noise. Shame on you. I just hope God don't come back before it's too late. You're going to miss your opportunity. Should have been praising God. But you let it pass by. That's why I'm going to give the praise. I said, oh, anybody got a prayer? I'm not Oh, anybody, anybody, anybody got a praise? Gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it out before I get home. Can't wait, I can't wait. I may not make it back home. Oh, gotta get it out while I can, gotta get it out while I can, I gotta get it out while I can, I gotta get it out while I can. Got the activities of my limbs, gotta get it out. What did I come to resort for if I can't get my praise out? What did I come to the reunion for if I can't get my praise out? Especially if they set it up for you. I said they set it up for you. You don't know what's going to happen when you get home. That's why you got to get your praise out. God pulled you from everybody. I said he pulled you from everybody. Nobody but you and him. Said cast all your cares on me. Cause I care for you And I don't want, I don't want I don't want you to leave here mm, Without giving it to the Lord Tell your neighbor, say give it to him Tell him again, say give it to him He's the only one that can handle it He's the only one can handle me. I don't have no handles in the house. He's the only one that can handle me. What looks impossible?
want y'all to think about a situation you're going through right now that looks like it's so unbearable. Look like you just, it's all out of your control. God can make, God can make, He can make the impossible possible. If you believe it, open up your mouth and say yes. Come on and say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I know you can. Everybody lift your hands in the house. And I, yeah, God, thank you. We praise him through it. He'll bring you out of it. I said, praise him through it. And he'll bring you out of it. God has everything in control. Oh, he got everything in control. Don't worry about it no more. You're in the tabernacle. I said you're in the tabernacle and all I need you to do is begin to pray to God tonight because whatever you're praying about God is working it out get your hands up get your hands up like you really want to receive something from God oh, oh, oh. Thank you for lifting the pressure. Thank you for lifting the pressure. Pressure I'm in. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for lifting the pressure. Hey, hey, my, my, my son. So, y'all, when you came in here, you came in here with so much pressure. Pressure and pain on your mind, oh. came to lift the pressure don't have to worry about folk talking about you no more don't have to worry about folk poking fun at you no more because God is putting you in the spirit of prayer mm, over the next seven days I dare y'all to make sure you give God the prayer time you're going to see him turn some things around he gonna turn it around in your in your favor in your favor oh are y'all praying those of us that know about praying well, by praying, sometimes you get down on your knees, you don't know what to say. But you let the Holy Ghost take over. Okay. The Bible says that the Spirit make an inner intercession to your cronies that you cannot even utter. That's why you got to keep it going. You got to continue to pray. Pray and always pray. Men are to always pray and not faint. Thank you. 
in this room we were here but many of us was under pressure and tonight God we thank you for the release we thank you for lifting the pressure tonight Father we do know the remedy to get out of pressure the pain the circumstances and things that we have to deal with is praying Father I pray tonight that you would unite these people these women that is in this room Unite them with the fervent of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. God, do something that has never been done. We thank you for what you're going to do tonight. And Father, if it's anything that we've done wrong, please forgive us for it. Open up your mouth and say, God, forgive us for it tonight. We don't want anything to hinder our praise. Take out anything that's not like you use us for your servants from this day forward and father I thank you now this word that we've heard tonight God I pray that you'd anoint these women and get them ready for this season this season of prayer and we thank you for what you're going to do and we give you glory praise and honor in Jesus name everybody clap your hands and give God praise for the victory Come on, give God praise for the victory. Come on, give Him praise for the victory. The victory. God has released the pressure tonight. How many of you feel a lot better? I even feel a little better myself. The last couple of days we've been up under such great travel until I needed to get to the tabernacle like Hannah some situations that I'm going through even right now and I thank God for giving me for lifting the pressure that I was up under tonight I thank God for that thank God for the answers For the answers I tell y'all you gotta make sure you check your cell phone God's doing some things with your cell phone God's gonna give you inspiration you gotta make sure you're in the right place at the right time to receive it I've got an answer today <laughs> We have to preach under pressure. Preach under pressure. Nobody knows the things you have to deal with. But the remedy is, is that Hannah, when she got on her knees, and began to pray to God. The Bible says that her lips moved. Nothing came out. Her mouth! enemy don't know what you're saying that's why we got to make sure you have that constant communication with God he hears the righteous and he attends to your prayer look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the next seven days promise God that you're going to give him his time you're going to give him his time you get up in the morning give him his time he want to hear from you in the morning not he don't want you to play no music. He just want to hear it. He want to hear from you. He, he wants you to say something. He wants you to adore him. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to magnify him. The more you magnify him, guess what he's doing? He's making your enemies your footstool. He's putting things in place.
face that the things that you've been praying about, God is already going before you. Touch three people and say, God's already got it. He's already got it. You just got to talk to him. Talk to the person you know. Talk to him. Matter of fact, why don't you just give him a good thank you, sir. I said, why don't you give him a good thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to save me. You didn't have to keep me. But you did. Right now, that by this time tomorrow. 